There was an unprecedented court hearing today regarding the first former American president to be indicted. It's about the gag order in the federal criminal case accusing Donald Trump of trying to undermine the 2020 election. The order restricts Trump's ability to publicly target court staff, witnesses, special counsel Jack Smith and his staff. Yeah, Trump's attorneys say that it limits his First Amendment rights, but one of the judges in the three-judge panel gave an early sign that he may not agree with Trump's attorneys. Let's listen. First of all, we're not shutting down everyone who speaks. We're only, this is only affect, no one's shutting down and everyone's, this is only affecting speech temporarily during a criminal trial process by someone who has been indicted as a felon. No one here is threatening the First Amendment broadly. CNN's Zachary Cohen is covering the story. We also have Caroline Polisi with us. She's a federal and white collar criminal defense attorney. Zach, first to you, just based on, on that question, it seems like the gag order is likely to stay in place. Yeah, the judges were not buying the argument from Trump's attorneys. They were saying that Trump basically shouldn't have any restrictions on what he's allowed to say um, related to this case. And, you know, that's really underscored by the fact that these judges were really honing in on very detailed questions. They were even using hypothetical scenarios to sort of illustrate the point that they don't really have an appetite for throwing out the gag order entirely, but they wanted to know exactly when maybe there were some First Amendment issues and when there weren't. And one of the hypotheticals that they brought up was a situation where former Vice President Mike Pence, hypothetically, he was about to testify the next day and Donald Trump maybe tweets something to the effect of you could still do your job, Mike Pence, right. if you, you know, make the right decision tomorrow. Take a listen at this back and forth though, between the judges and Trump's lawyers. Let's assume uh, former Vice President Mike Pence is going to testify and it's the night before his testimony. Um, couldn't the defendant tweet out? Mike Pence can still fix this. Mike Pence can still do the right thing if he says the right stuff tomorrow. First of all, is that communicating with the witness? If it's just broadcasting a statement of core political speech on social media, likely not. So obviously the witness list in this case has not been released right. yet, but Mike Pence has been a central figure of this case from the beginning. And so it's interesting that the judges were raising this hypothetical to really nail down on how they're grappling with this issue of political speech versus maybe criminal speech or things that don't fall under the First Amendment. Yeah. Caroline Plessy, what do you make of that? John Sauer saying that this is broadcasting core political speech, that it's not communicating with a witness. And, and then overall, how likely do you think this, uh, it is for, that this gag order will be upheld? Yeah, Alex, I think definitely the gag order will be upheld, um, you know, regardless of how the oral argument went today. I think just just by dint of that three judge panel, what we know about them, what we know about their jurisprudence, it will be upheld. It was a very lively debate this morning, to be sure. Judges were really pushing hard on Sauer's um, argument, really, that you know, the First Amendment protection against political speech is basically invaluable. He wouldn't really budge from, as you heard there, all these hypotheticals that the judges were throwing at them, at him saying, well, well, when would it be appropriate for a court to exercise its jurisdiction in maintaining, um, you know, a, a, a courtroom that runs smoothly, a untainted jury pool with the safety of the court staff at you know, paramount importance, and and uh, the Trump team didn't have very many answers. And besides just sticking to that one um, sort of tying point, which is that you know he can basically say whatever he wants, whenever he wants. And let's dig deeper on what Caroline is talking about, Zach, because you have some sound of Sauer drilling down, saying this is a First Amendment issue. This is really the first thing Trump's attorney said during today's hearing, and he made his point very clear that Trump should be able to say whatever he wants. But listen to how um, you know defiantly and how strongly his lawyer made the case today in court. Yeah. The order is unprecedented, and it sets a terrible precedent for future restrictions on core political speech. This is a radical departure from the only cases that have considered this particular uh, uh, form of restriction, a restriction on a criminal defendant who is also campaigning for public office, and it does so in the context of a hotly contested campaign for the highest office in the United States of America. 
So the judges agreed, though, that political speech does um, require significant protection under the First Amendment. But um, a little insight here, he was supposed to have about 20 minutes to make his case in court today. They spent about two hours going back and forth with Trump's lawyers. So it, d- it does show you the sort of gap there that exists between the judges and Trump's legal team. Hmm. And Caroline, what, did, what do you make of that, that argument by Sauer that it, that it sets a terrible precedent? Well, I would just note, and the judge pushed back on this with Sauer, that you know, the, the gag order, just to be clear, the gag order was extremely narrowly tailored, which is what you look for when you're balancing these two you know, big rights, really First Amendment rights, and then the right of the court system to administer justice um, as it sees fit. The, that gag order would allow uh, former President Trump to really rail against the prosecution, say it's politically motivated, call it a witch hunt, as he's so fond of doing, um, really bash you know, the Democrats, President Biden. He can do all that. The, the very narrow issue here is whether or not he can directly attack court staff, prosecution, the prosecutors, prosecutors, um, things of that nature, which would incite violence. One of the key issues was how attenuated can that sort of incitement be? Um, you know, it's, it goes back to this, won't someone rid me of that meddlesome priest, which um, mm-hmm. is the, the idea of, well, President Trump has all these, you know, people reading his truth social posts. What might they do um, when they get a tweet that sort of crosses the line into that territory of potentially doing violence, doing harm? So that was a key issue today as well. And Caroline, notably, no matter what happens with this appeals court, it, it may not be the final say for this gag order. Absolutely not. They, they could, you know, the defense could at first request an on-bank hearing, meaning not just the three-judge panel, but the whole Court of Appeals yeah. at that level. And then I, I think this is really um, being teed up for a, a Supreme Court uh, decision. Zach, what about the, the judge's concern that they showed today about jurors in this case uh, getting doxxed, for example? It was interesting because this was not explicitly addressed in the gag order itself, but it's something the judges did raise proactively. And they were asking if there was any technological way to protect potential jurors from the kind of speech Caroline was just talking about, the things that Trump says, but, you know, maybe inspire some of his followers to, you know, potential threat of some kind. And, you know, the uh, prosecutors that were asked that question basically said, no, there is no way to protect jurors. So this could factor into, you know, the ultimate decision from this panel. And it'll be interesting to see if that factors into a Supreme Court decision going forward since it wasn't laid out in the gag order itself. Yeah, interesting to see if it does get to the Supreme Court, how it gets perhaps uh, to the core of of this case, how it might change the nature of the case. Zach Cohen, Caroline Polisi, thank you both so much. Alina, you cover uh, the former president on the campaign trail. What are you hearing from Team Trump about this? Well, look, I mean, I don't think this strategy is surprising at all. I mean, we've seen them push back heavily um, in the New York civil fraud trial uh, with the gag order there. This is their strategy. They very much think that it is Donald Trump's right to be able to speak about his cases. And part of that is they want this entire legal strategy to also be a political strategy. And they do not want to fight these legal battles in the court of law or just in Mm -hmm. the court of law, but in the court of public opinion. And by blocking Um, some of his ability or limiting his speech uh, because of this case prevents him from doing that.